at some point in their life, everyone is forced to go off script, to make things up, to improvise. Now this makes most people nervous, but you see, I have a slightly different philosophy, different mentality about it, because of the way that I've grown up. You see, when I was very small, still toddling around with my hair in a short blonde pixie cut, my mom would sit me down beside her at the piano. She'd strike up a boogie-woogie bass line and tell me to just play something, anything. And that was my first experience with improvisation, which is the art of making things up on the spot. And that's what you just heard me do a minute ago when I completely improvised a solo to wait in the water. But anyway, when I was small, I was fearless. My parents had to keep me from sampling leaves, climbing on the furniture, and riding my tricycle down the stairs. <laughs> my fearless streak gave me stitches and bruises and black eyes as a child but it also helped make me into a bold musician with the proper guts for improvisation. And improvisation, in turn, has taught me three main lessons that I would like to share with you today. The first such lesson is that there can be a function to fearlessness. Mind you, fearlessness can be very destructive in a number of contexts. Remember the black eyes, the bruises, the stitches. But I believe that it's usually constructive when applied to the arts. When I'm up here improvising, I'm not necessarily thinking through everything that I'm doing. I'm not second guessing myself. If I, I just, I don't have the time to do that. I must be fearless. The second main lesson of improvisation is that mistakes aren't truly mistakes unless I can't get out of them elegantly. <laughs> now this has happened to me many times, and I know it's happened to many other jazz musicians. They'll be going along, you'll be playing something really cool, and then you try something, and it doesn't quite turn out. You wind up in slightly the wrong key, or a little bit on the wrong chord, or whatever you do just sounds funny. Now what ends up separating the sheep from the goats really, is the ability to keep going. I find that as long as I breathe and I focus on keeping the music going forward, I can usually bring myself out of whatever tight spot that I've gotten myself into. And lastly, the third lesson of improvisation is that for me, the best music is made when I only have one shot at it when all I'm left with is my spirit, my resourcefulness, inventing in the present moment. There's nowhere to hide and no composer to blame. There's no opportunity for me to rehearse and perfect and present my best retouched musical face. I get one shot now. There's simply no time for me to present anything other than myself which is what makes improvisation so powerful, so personal, and so raw for me. And before I keep fiddling, I'd like to leave you with a quote from the author Milan Kundera from his novel, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. Kundera writes, we live everything as it comes, like an actor going on cold. And what can life be worth when the only rehearsal for life is life itself? But in light of improvisation, I'd like to interpret his words, to reinterpret them, if you will, in a different, more positive light. Each life and each improvisation is spontaneous, is unrehearsed, is impossible to repeat. But in my eyes, that does not make them meaningless, but rather opens up in them an opportunity for infinite potential. So the next time you find yourself going off script or making things up, having to improvise, being in the unknown, I hope that you remember Milan Kundera's words and take that opportunity you've been given 
as an opportunity for creativity. Because you never know. What can life be worth when the only rehearsal for life is life itself?